Hey, what's up guys? This is Andy here at Duranglers here in Durango, Colorado. And today we're going to be talking about streamer fishing. seems like there's a lot of misconceptions or just misunderstanding when it comes to fishing streamers. It's one of our favorite ways to catch fish. Uh, the best part of it is there's really no wrong way to fish a streamer. Streamer fishing can be as involved as you want it to be. It doesn't have to be this big, you know, ordeal of filling up a suitcase full of streamers and getting 10 rods with different sink tips and shooting heads and all sorts of different stuff. You can do that if you want, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, one thing we like to tell people, though, uh, with streamer fishing, you don't have to get a new rod. Uh, fish what you have now. Uh, that's what I would like to tell a lot of people who walk into the shop. Uh, you may just be fishing a three-weight, four-weight, and that may be the only rod you have. Uh, and what you can do instead of going out and buying a new rod is just tailor the streamers and the bugs you're using to the size of rod you have. Uh, one thing I do actually fish a lot, especially in creeks, which is very rare in the summer when they don't want to eat a dry fly, but it happens from time to time, overcast rainy days or whatever. Uh, I fish a two weight a lot, and one thing I fish a lot is uh, this guy here. It's a little semi-seal leech. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, I like to fish this little semi-seal a lot in creeks, even in high country lakes for cutthroats, brook trout, uh, and I can throw it real easy on a one or even two weight. Um, some people, you know, you only have a four weight rod, five weight rod, four weight, you know, you're going to be able to fish these a little bit bigger. It's called a slump buster. Uh, we're going to talk about flies at another point in time. But just to give you an idea, uh, that five weights too, a lot of people in Colorado, the nine foot five weights kind of the typical rod you're gonna be fishing. So, you know, even this smaller mini dungeon by Kelly Gallup, that's easy to cast on, on a five weight. Uh, and then, you know, some people really like to get into the articulated fly fishing, uh, articulated streamer game and my, I like it too. Um, I think everyone likes to see big brown trout chasing these down. This is a big cheech leech. Uh, might be better cast on a six or a seven weight. You can still do it on a five weight. It's just not as easily, not as easily done. So it really doesn't require too much in the way of new gear to fish a streamer. Just pick the right size of streamer for you know the rod you're going to be fishing. Um, that being said, a lot of us do like to have. Uh, a little bit bigger setup for streamers, throwing bigger stuff, uh, big articulated flies, mouse patterns, poppers even sometimes uh, for trout. And here in Durango, especially here, a lot of us at Duranglers, we tend towards a six weight. Uh, just to bump up from a five weight, it gives us a little more power with casting into the wind. We can pick up some more line, uh, throw heavier streamers. I know different places in the United States, you're going to be fishing even bigger, seven and eight weights. Uh, a lot of Montana guys fish big uh, seven weights on those bigger open rivers out of boats. Um, you know, on the White River in Missouri, even up to an eight weight. And I, I have even fished an eight weight here. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, definitely, you can throw big stuff with it. Um, but, you know, kind of the sweet spots, a six, maybe a seven weight in in and around Colorado. You might have a different idea about that, which is fine. Uh, it's just what we prefer. Uh, I'm going to show you a real quick my preferred setup. And actually, this is my setup here. Um, this is a Sage X691 um, with a... This is essentially going to be the Sage Spectrum LT. This is actually the 4200 series. But those reels are pretty much about the same reel. Um, and then I'm fishing a floating line on here. We'll talk about that more in a second. This is a Scientific Angler's MPX. Uh, wait for it floating. And, you know, Sparkle Minnow, one of the... It's Frank Smethurst, if any of you know. Frank would say the Sparkle Minnow is the 9-foot 5-weight of streamers. Um, 
he said that about a lot of stuff, such as the nine foot five weight of chapstick or the nine foot five weight of tires. Pretty much you could say that about anything. And you probably all should start saying that. And then another thing about this setup we'll talk about is I have, this is a little bit unique to us. It's not, you know, unique to the Wranglers, but we've been doing this a long time, is a slip cone weight on this rather than a sink tip. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but that's my preferred setup. Um, picks up a lot of line. It's powerful, but it's not super fast as to, you know, be hard to mend and roll cast and do, you know, a lot of stuff that trout wear rods are supposed to do. All right, so next up, uh, I want to just quickly cover rods, uh, some of our favorites. And again, what we really like is uh, six or seven weight rods for trout. Uh, we usually don't stem too far from that if we're you know, specifically throwing these rods with streamers. But you know, occasionally, we'll throw an eight weight as well. Uh, we'll cover that actually in a second here. Um, I'm just going to go through some of our quick favorites here at the shop. Uh, first up is the uh, Scott Radian six weight, uh, fast meets feel. Um, most of our, also I'll cover this, uh, most of our uh, streamer rods do have a fighting butt. Uh, not necessary, um, but we do like to have it, you know, especially if you're fishing out of a boat and do need to yoke on a fish to keep them from pulling you under a log and breaking you off. Um, so that was the Scott Radian six weight. It's got a lot of power. Uh, you still can feel um, that rod load really well. Uh, cast really nicely. Uh, great boat rod. Um, I will mention too that a lot of people don't consider a saltwater specific rod as a streamer rod, but like the method, they have a lot of power. Um, one we really do like, actually two we really do like is the Sage Salt. Uh, and the Sage Salt HD. Uh, the Salt HD is the new one that came out this year. This is the seven weight version. Uh, not a lot of people consider these as streamer rods, but they make for great streamer rods. And if you're considering any saltwater trips or any bass fishing, uh, most of these rods, actually all of these rods do work double duty as that kind of stuff. Um, one that's actually uh, not a lot of people consider a uh, streamer rod is the Sage Pulse 790. This rod's going to be in this lineup of rods I'm showing you here, probably the slowest. Uh, some people, myself included, do like that slower action um, out of a boat. And the reason is it gives you a little bit more shock absorption on that back cast so you don't have that big thud, you know, especially with a big sink tip or a big streamer on that back cast kind of absorbs that a little better but it's still got a lot of power uh, turn fish really well uh, it's a good fish fighting stick and then one rod that came out this past year that um, if you haven't cast you probably should uh, for the price made in the usa it's an incredible rod the sage foundation 690 this one does not come with a fighting but the 790 does um, it's a faster action rod. I do find this to be a little more akin to, if you remember the old Z-axis, one of my favorites. I do like this rod. Um, Sage did really well with this uh, lower price rod. Um, so that's a good option too, uh, especially if you're trying to get into the streamer game. And then finally, we do carry one that I really like. Um, it's a full setup, Reddington Vice eight weight. Uh, so a little bit heavier on the streamer game, but uh, good for boats, good for pike. If you're actually going for that, that's not what this is about, but good for streamers too. Uh, if you have one rod and you need it to do a lot of things, this would be a good one. Seven or eight weight actually does that all really pretty well. All right, so I'd just like to quickly talk about reels. Um, reels are something you kind of want to consider, but it's not necessarily the most important part of your whole rig. Uh, I would say that's going to go more towards the rod and the line. But nonetheless, you will probably want to consider a reel with a little bit more drag, a little bit more power in that drag, just because, you know, you're out on a boat or in a bank on the bank of a river. Uh, 28 inch brown trout eats your streamer. He, he could go anywhere. Uh, unlike a lot of other fishing, 
uh, with flies for trout. Streamer fishing does uh, sometimes test your drag. Uh, we have a lot of different favorite reels. Uh, one of uh, something you like with uh, good drags, always a good option. Um, cream of the crop right now is probably going to be, you know, the Hatch 5 Plus Fanatic. Uh, great for a 5, 6, or 7 weight. Uh, powerful, all sealed drag, fully machined. Uh, next up would be, you know, this Sage, like I fish, uh, the Sage Spectrum. This is a Spectrum LT, uh, Spectrum, the Sage 3200 series. Uh, these are all going to have great drags, really lightweight on this Spectrum. Um, click indexing drag right there, uh, and a powerful drag. Next up is the Ross Animus 5.6. Uh, locally made here in Colorado, Montrose, fully machined, picks up a lot of line. This is going to be uh, not only a shop favorite, but one of our guide favorite reels as well. Uh, takes a beating, works really well out of a boat, uh, and these things last a long time. Great drag, uh, sturdy, and one thing about the 5.6 or any of these Ross Animus is, is they are Built a little larger than what they claim, so the 5.6 is going to be more like a 5.6.7. Uh, it's easy to fit a you know 100 pound to 20 100 yards of 20 pound backing and a seven weight with a bigger head on there. Uh, still a great reel. Uh, great. This is what I fish uh, a lot of times on a five weight as well as an eight weight. Um, great reel as well. Finally, you know. Uh, a good priced reel with claimed to be the strongest drag in its class, which it's a pretty darn strong drag, is the uh, Reddington Behemoth. Uh, the be Behemoth for the price is going to be a really, really good reel. 5.6 uh, is going to be great for a six weight. Uh, and you can just put some torque on them, you know, hard running fish. Uh, unlike a lot of fly reels for trout, a lot of uh, shops will tell you, you know, reel kind of holds the line. That's true to an extent for streamer fishing because there's always an exception to that rule. Uh, you're fishing heavier tippet, heavier flies, heavier everything, and you're targeting heavier fish. So it's always good to have that backup plan of a good drag system. All right, let's talk fly lines. Uh, there's a lot of confusion with fly lines in general, uh, understandably so. There is a ton of them out there. They all do different things, and they all do different things to different rods. Uh, so we're going to assume if you're streamer fishing, um, if you're looking to throw heavier stuff, you're going to be fishing a faster action rod. We talked about those a little bit ago. All those rods were considered... Uh, fast action, uh, with the exception of the pulse, which is more of a medium fast, uh, still power, uh, has a lot of power. So let's talk about lines. Uh, let's make this not terribly confusing. Um, first up, if you walk into a fly shop or you're looking for a fly line to just grab and go, uh, for streamer fishing, um, the first one I would say is it's called the Rio Grande. This is made specifically for faster action rods. Uh, why it's made specifically for faster action rods is that it is made to overload that rod, so it's easier to load a heavier rod. Uh, it's a heavier line. It does cast uh, bigger flies with a little bit more ease. However, if you're considered you know, an expert caster, uh, you might not like that line as much as two other ones I would uh, direct you to. Um, one being the Rio Grande. Uh, the Rio Grande is, I believe, half a line size heavy, which means it's good for fast action rods, but it's not going to overload your rod. It's just a good all-around floating line. And then the other one is the Scientific Anglers uh, MPX Taper. They make that in their Mastery Series as well as the Amplitude. This is going to be half a size, half a line size heavier as well. Uh, good for just throwing bigger bugs, uh, hoppers too, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but we're talking streamers here. So on that note, 
Let's talk about a couple different lines too. Uh, if you're fishing from a boat and you want to make quick one-shot casts, uh, the Rio uh, in touch big nasty, aptly named, is going to be good for really big streamers throwing uh, quick shots. The line taper on that has a really heavy uh, front head, which is about 10, uh, 10 feet long. Uh, some of the people really love that line. They swear by it. Um, makes for, you know, chucking big stuff easy. One line that most people will never pick up and one that I cannot recommend enough, and this is a specialty line, uh, but for streamers, especially, actually just streamers in general, the Rio Single Hand Spay Fly Line. This line has been named inappropriately because you just thought it was a spay line. It is a great fly line for doing pretty much everything. Uh, overhand casting, it's going to be overweighted, but the taper of that line has the weight towards the back of the uh, weight forward section. It's got a, got a longer presentation section. Um, I fished it from a boat. I fished it, uh, you know, just weighting, roll cast heavy streamers really well, and overhead cast streamers really far is one thing I like about that too. And you can do uh, a fair amount of quick shots with it if you're fishing from a boat or you, uh, you know, mending fly lines as a lot of people don't do when they're fishing streamers, which you should do. Uh, it's a good line for that. All right. Sinking lines. So we can probably have a debate in the comments of this video here on sinking lines and the validity of them here in Colorado. Um, there's always an exception to the rule, or how you like to fish is probably just as great as how we like to fish, and you like to fish a sinking tip. Uh, we can talk about that here. Uh, I'm going to show you some sink tips really quick, and then I'm going to tell you why we don't typically fish them, but there's still places for them in Colorado. We're not talking about Montana, Missouri, bigger rivers, bigger stuff where you're fishing, you know, places that shoot out 20,000 CFS as a normal spring runoff. Uh, first up um, is going to be this line here. If you do want to fish a sink tip, this is going to be a good one to get your flies down pretty quick. It's a triple density uh, sonar titan from Scientific Anglers. And titan means it's just got a heavier front head, great for turning over uh, streamers. And what it is is it's a type 5 sink tip with a Type three behind that, and then behind that's an intermediate tip, or sorry, an intermediate running line. So this is a full sinking line. Uh, the tip sinks quicker than the rest. Typically, this is going to be a little bit better for lakes, though. The other two are going to be these Rio In Touch sink tip uh, streamer lines. Actually, they're just kind of general sink tip lines. 24 foot and a 15 foot. If it were me and I was had a choice fishing in Colorado, I'd be choosing the 15 foot over the 24 foot. We, being Duranglers, uh, this might be different for you or your fishing, but uh, I fished a lot on the Colorado River. Um, I fished a lot, you know, on the Animas, uh, the Rio Grande, um, a lot of places with a lot of deep water. Typically, I'm still fishing a uh, float tip, or sorry, a floating line, full floating line. Uh, reason being is a lot of us like to be able to see that fly and see what it's doing and what's chasing it. Um, there's not a lot of time for a sink tip in Colorado, meaning if you're fishing a sink tip, um, it's easier to get a fly down quicker than it is to get that whole line down. Because once you get that whole line down, you're also dragging it through a lot of rocks. Uh, there's a whole dissertation on that that I could probably go into. I still fish sink tips from time to time. All right, we're getting through it. Let's talk leader and tippet and a few more things about what we're putting on those, and then we're done. Um, leaders. So a lot of people like to fish leaders, tapered leaders for streamers. That's fine. Uh, if you're going to do that, I would recommend rarely going below a 3x tapered leader. Same with tippet. Streamer fishing. Fish aren't as picky with uh, 
tippet size. They're chasing something down to kill it. So they're not sipping a size 24 Trico. So 3X is about as small as I ever go. If you're worried that fish are leader shy, you can fish uh, fluoro. I still don't. Uh, but what we usually are fishing for with streamers, I should say, is this stuff. The best stuff in the world, Maxima. This is just a stiff nylon. It comes in ultra green color and we have it in 30 pound down to eight pound, six pound. So what typically I'll do is I'll attach a piece of uh, 25 pound to my fly line, uh, two feet of that, and then two feet of 15 pound, and then another two feet of 10 to 12. Uh, and the other thing about this stuff is it's a lot larger diameter than tippet, uh, typical trout tippet. Some people might balk at that. When you have a fish break you off by turning its head, you might change your mind. This heavier tippet, uh, Maxima, is especially, you know, in the springtime when fish are hot, when they're running hard, when a fish can eat your fly, and when that head turns, uh, you're fishing straight towards the fly, meaning you're not trout setting, your, your rod is pointing directly at that fish in your strip setting. So if you're strip setting, uh, the shock of that alone can break even 0x tippet. Uh, this larger diameter stuff, while it has, you know, may have a different pound rating per diameter, it actually absorbs shock a lot better, which is why we fish that. Uh, fish do not tend to care about the size of that tippet. Again, they are looking to kill. So, this is usually where I go. You get a 27-yard uh, spool, uh, tie your own leaders. Another thing to do is an old leader, such as, you know, your 5X. So you got a 5X uh, tapered leader and you've used it up, just cut it back and then tie on some 1 or 2X tippet. So finally, let's talk some quick accessories. Uh, really, there's only two. Uh, if you're a guy who does like sink tip fly lines, uh, but you're still fishing here in Colorado, we do recommend the uh, Rio Versa leaders. These leaders work really well uh, as an intermediary between a floating line and a sinking line. Uh, we like them just because they sink quick, get your fly down fast. Th this one is a seven IPS, so seven inches per second. Uh, does add a lot of weight to that cast, so I wouldn't really try that one with anything under a six. Uh, maybe even a seven is going to be your best bet casting that. I've done it with a five weight, it's just not the most pleasant. Uh, and then we had talked about it earlier, uh, water gremlin slip sinkers. Not just for catfish rigging with chicken gizzards. Uh, these guys are, for us, been a long time favorite for streamer fishing. Uh, especially from a boat, you know, high water, you're throwing at the, uh, throwing at the bank. And even if you're fishing a sink tip from a boat, all those fish are stacked tight to the bank. That fly does not have enough time to sink fast enough with a sink tip. It'll sink, you know, once you get that fly out into the main current, but by that point, that fish isn't really going to be there. So what we've done is, uh, all we do is, you can see it here. Uh, these slip sinkers on the tippet. And what that does is you throw that out there, that fly lands, and this immediately drops and pulls that fly down. And when you make that first strip, pulls right up, attaches, essentially attaches to the front of that fly, and it'll do that with every drop. And what it does is it not only drops that fly quick, it gives that fly almost a sculpin dive look, which is really important here in southwest Colorado. Um, these are, in our mind, the cheapest and best uh, alternative to any kind of weight in Colorado uh, for uh, streamer fishing. We, I would personally choose this with a floating line over another line, sinking line, even a uh, sink tip uh, or a sinking leader, just because it 
it's a quick change and it makes a lot of difference, especially if you're trying to drop that fly right behind a rock, big boulder down into a big pool or just fishing to the banks from a boat during runoff. Well, that has been a lot of information. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Andy at Duranglers and look out for another video coming up which is going to be all about choosing streamers, uh, the bugs you want to have, and then another one further on down the road with all the techniques we like to employ with streamer fishing, whether it be from the bank or a boat. Uh, take care.